And I know, you know, you can speak more on this being working with nine year olds, but it seems the business side of this or, or the job side of this is getting lower and lower in age. And it's, you know, as a high school coach looking at guys coming through, it's almost, I, I don't want to say tragic. It, it's, you know, the fun is so lost so early nowadays that it's, let me get recruited as a 10 year old or a 12 year old. And, and I know you spoke a lot with, with Scott Fox on this and, you know, there's so much pressure now on kids at such a young age to play this fun game that, that there's burnout by the time they get, or not by the time I see them right in high school and they're just worn out. And, and, you know, I think there needs to be some sort of shift. I don't know what that would look like. It's hard to regulate select ball and, and these private club ball teams. And, but you're exactly right. Uh, my, my goal as a, as a high school coach, Hey, let me bring the fun back almost. Right. Like, you've been so serious for so long and forgetting that this is just an a, a exciting and fun game that you are privileged to play and not very many people get to do this. And, you know, I teach special education and, and these kids just wake up happy to be at school every day and happy to be alive and smiling and, and loving it. And I just like see this, this beauty in that. And, and I want to exchange that for some people who are coming. Oh, I'm, I'm, we're at the field again, or I'm at the weight room again, and I have so much pressure, and you know I have to get this scholarship. I have to do this, and like, man, it's it's not a have to; it's a get to, and mm-hmm. that's a big mind shift going in baseball right now, and, and the business side of it, if you would. I don't know. How do you feel? Do you see that too? Oh man, <clears throat> you. <laughs> You, you said the right word. Uh, tragic. That's what it is. <laughs> it really is. Because if we cannot keep kids in sports at least until they get into high school, like if they get into high school and they decide they don't want to try out for the team, totally cool. Totally cool. But if they can play a sport or all of them <laughs> until yes. they're 14 years old, man, that's powerful. But – I understand that everything revolves around money. I get that. I do. I'm not an idiot. Okay. <laughs> like I know that I need money and I have to make money and ev- everyone needs money. I get it. And when you find a business model that works and it produces millions of dollars over and over and over again, you're going to continue doing that. I understand. So people like Perfect Game and all of those things, I'm not faulting you for creating a business model that is, is crushing it. I, I understand. But – but there has to be a level of morality that we choose to have for the sake of the kids playing the sport. It is ridiculous to have rankings for baseball teams at eight years old. 100%. You can still have all of the tournaments in the world. You can still charge $500 a team. You can still charge all of this. You can still charge a gate fee and all this stuff. You can do all of that. You can charge $45 for a pair of shorts to say PG on it. I love it. I love marketing. I love the hustle. I love all that stuff. But you do not have to rank anyone who's eight years old. You don't. I just don't. Like, there's no reason. Because then it falls back onto the parents. Then the parents want to look good in the eyes of the other parents and the other people in their town. So they have to be on the specific team, playing for the specific thing, having the specific thing. And then it trickles down into their kids. Now their kids feel the pressure of having to be on the team that's ranked number 10 in the country. If they're not, holy shit, they're never going to play for LSU. Like, so all of these things go together, but we, it, it's about uh, Jonathan Haidt, uh, sees as like a social scientist, talks about this collective action in terms of um, social media and teenagers. He said, parents have to come together. 50% or more have to come together to say, we're not letting our kid have a phone until they get to age 16. It has to be the same type of collective action on baseball parents or sports parents to say, we're not going to allow our kids to be ranked. We're not going to play in this sort of money grab, like ranking pressure situation. We're just going to play baseball. We're going to get around a good coach who wants to have fun, but also is going to teach my kid the fundamentals because those go hand in hand. Like sometimes baseball practice is boring. It's always going to be that way. That's why major leaguers do spring training and all they do is get hit fungo and do bunt plays like over and over. Like it's going to be that way as a young person as well. But we have to have collection, collective action. Like if one parent on the team says, "Mm, this doesn't make sense, they're booted. That parent's gone. Get them off the team. 
Yep. But if seven or eight or nine parents say, we don't really like where this is headed. We don't like how my child feels when he comes home from the game and he missed one ground ball and he's just distraught. And he's talking about how he doesn't want to play baseball anymore or he doesn't even want to play basketball. He doesn't want to go hang out with his friends because what if they're going to make fun of him for not being on the right team that's not ranked in a certain situation? It has to be boiled down into action. That's what everything is. No one cares about your words. No one cares about you might think it's wrong. But if you don't act on it, it's never going to change. It's never, ever, ever going to change. And so, again, it comes down to this idea of collective action. If you care about the well-being of your child, because we see the numbers. Kids are more lonely, depressed, anxious than they've ever been before. And it may not be because of sports. Sports are probably helping that. But there's also an additive process of sports creating more pressure inside of that with this aspect of social media and the sort of conglomeration of all of these things together. And so we have to be able to say, this is what's best for my kid. And then do it. Exactly and then right. like, And then on top of that, parents need to have these realizations. You need to be asking your kids the right questions after the game, after practice. It's not about, hey, why didn't you get a hit today? We did three hitting lessons this week. Holy shit. Are you yeah. kidding me? So Fair all down. that kid thinks is like, my, my parents pay for this thing. I have to get a hit. If not, I'm no value. Why not simply just say, hey, you know, Jimmy, I freaking loved watching you play today. Yeah. Oh, God, I loved watching you play. That's it. That's it. The conversation's over. That's it. Let's like, you don't need to have a deeper conversation than that, Ryan, right? Let's go get I mean, some pizza. <laughs> like, hey. I saw you fucking hustle on and off the field. I saw you high five your teammate. Boy, I saw your coach give you a high five and a pound. I loved watching you play today, dude. I loved it. That's you that as a mom and dad. Like it would, the it would be usually the only parents I see do that are the ones that played at a high level who have no stress when they come to the game. They're just yeah. like, ah, I'm just going to watch my kid play today. God, it's going to be fun. They're go sitting get it, back, baby. Go have a good day. Sitting back in the reclining chair, just, just enjoying it, man. And just and enjoying it. You know, letting the coach it. do his work, letting the teammates run around, you know, not going by around the dugout or walking yeah. in or yelling him out after he struck out. Just, he gets into the car and you just say, ah, fucking, don't have to love say fucking, it. but I'm just like juiced <laughs> up right now. But Absolutely. like, just, I loved watching you play the game. God, your hustle and your effort today was incredible. The kid will probably go, but, but dad, I, like I didn't get a hit. Dude, I don't care. I saw yeah. you go up to the plate every single time and you swung. Like you struck out your first at bat. I don't care. You showed up in your second at bat. That's awesome. You kept showing up. You went out and played defense too. Your coach told you to play right field. You'd never played right field before. Fucking nice job. Great job. Like that's Amen. the conversation. That's it. And then you take him home and then he's like, wow, I feel pretty good. Like, that's a great day. I'm ready, like I'm ready to go back to the baseball field. I'm not dreading going 100%. back to the baseball field now. I'm, I'm ready to go to the cages. You'd be Let's shocked. Go that's be, right. Uh, like even after the game, he's like, Hey dad, can we, can we go to D bat or something? Like, yeah, hey, we just played three uh, games. I'm ready to go to D bat. I feel oh, good. Cause you bet buddy. You bet. Yeah. We're going to throw this arm out, baby. Dude, I mean, it, and so, yeah. Um, it, it that, was that's what I things. think based on your, your question. <laughs>